the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God his Father, fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Happy New Year. To all of our friends who are watching us this morning, wherever you may be, we wish the same to all of you as we stream this Mass. Lord God, we place ourselves now in your presence. Father in heaven, you give us strength and courage in the midst of this adversity. Lord, have mercy. You raise us up in holiness and grace each day. Christ, have mercy. mercy. On this, the feast of the Epiphany, you make the Christ child a revelation in our lives. Lord, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. And let us pray. May the splendor of your majesty, O Lord, we pray, shed its light upon our hearts, that we may pass through the shadows of this world, reaching the brightness of our eternal home, through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Rise up in splendor, Jerusalem. Your light has come. The glory of the Lord shines upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick clouds cover the people. But upon you the Lord shines, and over over you appears his glory. Nations shall walk by your light, and kings by your shining radiance. Raise your eyes and look about. They all gather and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters in the arms of their nurses. Then you shall be radiant at what you see. Your heart shall throb and overflow, for the riches of the sea shall be emptied out before you. The wealth of nations shall be brought to you. Caravans of camels shall fill you. Dromedaries from Median and Ephah, all from Shelba, shall come bearing gold and frankincense, and proclaiming the praises of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. Lord, Lord, every every nation nation on earth earth will adore adore you. O God, with your judgment endow the king, and with your justice the king's son. He shall govern your people with justice, and your afflicted ones with judgment. Lord, Lord, every every nation nation on on earth will adore you. you. Justice shall flower in his days, and profound peace till the moon be no more. May he rule from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. Lord, Lord, every every nation nation on on earth earth will will adore you. The kings of Tarshish and the isles shall offer gifts. The kings of Arabia and Seba shall bring tribute. All kings shall pay him homage. All nations shall serve him. Lord, Lord, every every nation nation on earth earth will will adore you. you. For he shall rescue the poor when he cries out, and the afflicted when he has no one to help him. He shall have pity for the lowly and the poor. The lives of the poor he shall save. Lord, Lord, every every nation nation on on earth earth will adore adore you. you. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace. That name, that name, that was given to me for your benefit. Namely, that the mystery was made known to me by revelation. It was not made known to people in other generations as it has now been revealed. 
to his holy apostles and to prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles are co-heirs, members of the same body, and co-partners in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. We saw his star at its rising and have come to do him homage. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising. We have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled in all of Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired where the Christ was to be born. They said to him in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it has been written through the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly, ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word that I too may go and do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out. Behold, the star they had seen at its rising preceded them until it stopped and over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star and entering the house, they saw Mary with the child Jesus. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. They opened their treasures and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. One of my favorite films, and I'm sure one of yours, is the great romantic comedy, Moonstruck. And there's a moment in the film at the kitchen table where all things happen, as we know. And it is a moment of epiphany, compassion, and forgiveness. But most of all, it's an epiphany for the characters involved. Rose, played by... Olympia Dukakis, who won an Academy Award for that performance, looks at her husband Cosmo, played by Vincent Cardinia, and says to him distinctly and very clearly, having discovered his infidelity, I want you to stop seeing her. That simple. He rises up in all of his pseudo-Italian glory, slams his fist on the table, and says, all right and sits down. No discussion, no counseling, no kind of intervention, very simple. I know and you know, and now it's over. Epiphany is when the light bulb goes off in a sudden moment and the curtains part and you're made aware of something that somehow you didn't see before or you weren't certain of it or it just wasn't it just wasn't there in front of you. The great psychologist Abraham Maslow sometimes called that a peak experience. A peak experience as if, again, the curtains are just drawn away. And for whatever reason, you see something clearly that may have been in front of you all along, but you just didn't notice. Or maybe it wasn't the right time, whatever the case may be. And, and, and that's very, very important because those experiences are not to be taken lightly. And I think that very often it is, it is God behind us gently tapping us on the shoulder. Maybe he's been tapping us on the shoulder all along and, and, and the epiphany is a good punch right in the back. Maybe saying, you know, I've been trying to show you this for a while now, open your eyes. And that's, that's really critical because it is the grace of God 
that promotes that epiphany. It is the heart, the mind, the soul, the intellect, all at once going, my God, it was there all along. The heart, the mind, the soul, and the intellect saying to you, how come you didn't see this before? Saying to you, I, I need to make this decision and I need to do it now. There are just so many of those opportunities in life and everyone in this room has had them, had them on occasion. It is the grace of God that promotes those things within us. At least that's what I believe as a Christian, as a Catholic, is the grace of God within us. It is the God stuff that I often speak about that coalesces in a way that makes us unbelievably aware of a circumstance that we, we have to address, we have to deal with, we have to move on, we have to speak to, whatever it is, all of a sudden, we know. And it's not going to go away. Paul talks about that in his letter to the Ephesians. <clears throat> he says to them, the stewardship of God's grace that has been given to me for your benefit. What happened to Paul? An apparition, he was knocked off of his horse and blinded. Maybe God was kind of knocking and couldn't get in and said, yep, Paul's not listening, so we need a little bit of a, 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 of a bigger epiphany here. Gets knocked off the horse, is blinded, and here's that voice. I need you to work for me. Undeniable. Recovers his sight and becomes the apostle to the Gentiles. And lets this particular community know <clears throat> that the stewardship of God's grace has been given to me and to you. has been revealed to the apostles and the prophets that the Gentiles are co-heirs, members of the same body and co-partners in the promise in Jesus Christ. Co-partners. I love that word. It's nice to be a partner in something, right? Partner in a business, partnership in a marriage. Great dividends, great payback. You know, if the partnership works well, it's a great way to have relationships in life. Well, here's Paul saying, you are co-partners in the promise in Christ through the gospel. In Christ through the gospel. To reap the rewards of those epiphanies in our lives, all we need to do is harvest all of what Christ is saying in the Gospels we hear every Sunday. And I have said this to all of you and to myself many times. You know what that's about. You know the prodigal son. You know the story of his forgiveness, his healing of, of so many other people, the ten lepers. You know the story of the good Samaritan. You've heard it all. When you harvest all that wisdom and you carry it around, you are, you are the steward of those things. It's what makes us look at a situation with compassion and love and forgiveness, that peak experience, that epiphany that says to us, I have to address this. I have to act on this. I need to make this right. You understand what I'm saying? This is, this is good stuff. This is really what it's all about. And we need to pay attention to those things because so many people in life don't and everything becomes a mess. And you look at somebody in their life and what's going on, you say, why didn't you, why didn't you fix that? Why didn't you address that? Why did you let that get out of hand? Couldn't you see the train coming? Because most of us can. The stewardship of God's grace that, that enables and empowers us in so many ways, if only we're open to it, which means not being distracted by the things of this world too much, which means clarity in the way that we see the world and shedding from ourselves all those distractions, distractions of money and power and grasping after possessions and all the rest of it. Those things are fine and right in their own way, but when they clutter up life to the point where again, the heart, the mind, the soul, the spirit, and the intellect are impaired by those, the dominance of those things, then that's it's just it's not a way to go. It just isn't. I told the story last night when, when I was teaching, and I was, I was certified to teach in Pennsylvania, and I came here, and I took a couple of courses to come up to state certification, and the principal of the school said to me, you know, you're, you're pretty good at this. Why don't you 
get your master's in, um, uh, in uh, administration. And you could maybe, you know, one day be principal of a Catholic high school or, you know, in the administrative area, probably do very well. I was 25, 26 years old. I thought, well, that's a great idea. So I went to William Patterson. I took one course. I took another course. And it was sort of okay. God was tapping on my skull. And I was in a line one night to pre-register for the next semester. And the line stretched out of the student center down the sidewalk. I should have done it in the mail, I know but I didn't, and I was person in front of me, behind me, and we were having a chat about what our futures were, all very young, and you know, how many credits do you have, how many do you have? I said, I got like nine, I think, or might have been 12 and anything else, and we must have chatted for 20 minutes or so, such a long wait. And finally, I looked at the two of them and I said, "Um, I'm gonna give you my space because I'm leaving. And they said, but you've been waiting so long. I looked at those men and I said, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want a master's in education or administration. I, I'm going home. I want to go home. You can move up a little bit. And they were both, they looked at me like they, they just didn't understand it. And for me, it was, a, it was an epiphany. It was a moment of looking around at the line and looking at the night sky and realizing it's not what I want in my life. All along, I'd been thinking about it. And in that moment, I said, nope. No, no, time to go home. Told the principal, I said, I don't know where my life is going to go, but I am not going to be an administrator in school. And, And I think all of us have had those moments, but I think that there are more of them more often than we think there are. But we're distracted. We're not paying attention. We're not paying attention, most of all, to the grace of God that is in every one of us. And I I firmly believe that. I think the grace of God resides in our intellect, in our heart, in in our mind, our soul, and our spirit, in every one of those things that are intangible, that you are, that you feel, that you sense. You don't know where they emanate from, but they're there. The things that help us to fall in love, the things that make us smart, that give us intuition, all of those things, I believe, are powered by the grace of God. And I've always believed that. I don't think they're just inherent in us because we're sentient humans. I think that we possess God's stuff, and I think that stuff is grace. Use it wisely, my friends. It is a gift, and it can do great things, but you have to open your eyes. Open your ears, open your heart. We must reflect, pray, and be open to that great gift because it can lead to such great richness. We are co-partners in the promise of Jesus Christ, best partnership in the whole world, and the dividends are beyond price. Please rise. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We place our prayers and petitions before God, the needs of our parish, our community, our world. Responses, hear us. For the leaders of nations that they respect religious freedom, Lord, in your mercy, hear hear us. us. For the children of this community and the world, that they be a sign of God's delight in creation, Lord, in your mercy, hear hear us. us. For those who generously share their time, talent, and treasure, Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear us. us. For the homebound, for those in rehabilitation, and for those in hospice care, Lord, in your mercy, hear us. For those who need our prayers, and all those who have asked for us to pray for them, and for all whose names appear on the sick list in our parish bulletin, 
May God fill their lives with healing and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear us. For the, all who have died to rise with Christ in eternal light, especially Frank Freehoff, for whom this Mass is offered, Lord, in your mercy, hear us. We stand in silent reflection for so many in our nation and the world who are sick, for their families who may not even be able to visit them, for first responders everywhere who watch over us. In particular, I would like to remember the two lives lost in a fatal accident on the Hamburg Turnpike. I heard the crash. I saw the emergency vehicles. I was not sure until a policeman called me, a friend of mine, and said that um, one gentleman wandered over the line um, head on and uh, both drivers were killed. I did not sleep well that night knowing that took place outside my bedroom window. For those two lives lost also, we stand in silence. Lord God, you take care of those who come to you in eternal life. Watch over so many whose lives have come to you in the midst of the pandemic. For the two gentlemen whose lives were lost just the other evening, and for all those who are in a bad way, who will come to you very soon. We ask you to be our presence in our lives, in our struggles, and we ask this through Christ our Lord. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands to the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his church. Accept, we pray, O Lord, our offerings in honor of the appearance of your only begotten Son, the first fruits of the nations, that to you praise may be, adjusted, may be rendered each day and eternal salvation may be ours through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Lord, Holy Father and Almighty God. Today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light for the nations. And when it appeared in our mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with angels and dark angels, thrones and dominions in the heavenly host, we join in one great song of praise. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord. You are the font of holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until we come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking in the body and blood of Christ, we will be gathered into one people by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, Bring her to a fullness of charity with Francis, our Pope, Kevin, our Bishop, with clergy, religious, the entire people your son has gained for you. Remember also, brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into your light. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life praising and glorifying you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from needless fear and anxiety, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We share a sign of God's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold him, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please come to communion and socially distance yourselves. Thank you. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. The body of Christ. Body of Christ.
Once again, we wish all of you from our staff here a happy new year. Please be careful out there. Um, speaking with my niece who lives in Huntington, Long Island with her husband who um, uh, works at the hospital out there, Stony Brook um, University Medical Center, which is the largest on Long Island. Uh, there are 700 beds. 400 of those beds are at present COVID beds. Uh, this is an improvement over the last um, part of the pandemic when all the beds were COVID, including the conversion of his psych unit where he is a staff psychologist into COVID. So they consider this um, not as bad as it could be, but hoping it doesn't get any worse. Um, I remember very clearly a former student of mine who's the director of radiation oncology at Hackensack, which is the largest hospital by beds in the state of New Jersey. In the middle of the last um, rise, uh, which was in the spring or early spring, all 700 beds in Hackensack were COVID. So we are not out of the woods. Please be careful out in the world. Uh, again, in referencing that terrible auto accident, which was so tragic in the taking of two, two lives, two gentlemen drivers, um, I have personally stood before the town council um, many years ago and asked them to address the dangerous nature of this piece of the Hamburg Turnpike from this light to Black Oak Ridge Road. Uh, even though the renovations um, at Alps and the Hamburg Turnpike are probably going to begin in the spring, this is the most dangerous place, especially around Armstrong Avenue. Um, I went once before the council and I said at least put up one of those signs on the southbound side before the entrance to my church that says red signal ahead because they come up over the hill, they don't even know there's a light there, and they just keep going. If you're coming out of that driveway someday and you see you have a green light and you don't look to the left, you'd be very foolish because I've seen people not stop. They crest the hill and they keep on going and I've complained about it. There's a school across the street. People go to the bus station there to get the 197 and it all falls on deaf ears. So maybe, maybe I need to put my priest clothes on and go to a town council meeting again and yell and scream and jump up and down. I don't know, but it just, I think is a situation that's deadly serious now. That's three or four deaths that I know of here. It needs to be addressed. Before I get any more wound up about this, let us all stand and pray. Renewed by the sacred nourishment, we implore your mercy, O Lord, that the star of your justice may shine always bright in our minds, that our true treasure may be ever consistent in our confession of you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Celebration is ended. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord and each other.